Hey guys, it's Mac and Bruce. We're here checking in uh, to talk a little bit about some delivery mechanisms. We went and kind of pulled a couple of things that we had pre-built here um, that we had around the office just to kind of use these as starting points and talking things. Uh, Bruce went digging through the closet and uh, found this guy from last year. Bruce, how about you tell us a little bit about our conveyor here? Yeah, the conveyor, this is something that I found. I, I thought it would be something useful looking at some of the other stuff that we've done this week. Uh, being able to play with it, uh, being able to look at what we were trying to accomplish with it. Uh, this looks like it could definitely do uh, some of the stuff that we were looking at. It's got a couple of things that I could tell just off of the bat would be a little bit tough to work on, but let's roll the B footage just so we can see. As you can see, it's kind of going a little bit slower. You can always adjust the speed, but one of the big things with this is the difference in size uh, between the ball and the block basically makes it a little bit tough. Um, plus you're gonna have to have multiples as far as we have three uh, belts that are going around on here. And usually we would have to do five or six, but as you can see, you can get some stuff done uh, with it and move it along, but it's maybe not the best solution for some of the stuff we're trying to do. Right, so like if we were to go ahead and take this to the next step and the next level, it's probably going in a similar route that we did with the ultimate goal prototyping. Likely we would look at probably using some of our timing belts and pulleys mm -hmm. instead of using our poly cord here. Uh, and also likely we would want to add compliance into this bottom board as well as having a little bit of compliance on the top. Yep. Um, I, I don't know if it was really all that clear from the video, but definitely when we were out there in the warehouse, uh, this cardboard is very beat up just from the differences in sizes of the things like Bruce was mentioning. Um, the other kind of delivery mechanisms, so like the conveyor in some level was an idea. We could maybe put it on an angle and have it go all the way up, yep. up to the highest scoring portions. Um, the other ways of kind of getting uh, your, your stuff up onto our uh, warehouse here potentially using something like our linear motion kit. So we had this one kind of built up in the office. We made some minor adjustments to it by changing some of the, some of the heights um, of the individual stages here, uh, as well as we're doing a couple, one clever thing here is using one of our hinges to kind of help get this angle and not interfere with the slots over here uh, for holding that on. And then also uh, for the HD hex motor that we have on here, we have one of our pulleys uh, that we've basically put the string in between the middle of and being able to secure that in there to kind of act as a, as a drum. Um, one of the nice things with, with these is that it's fairly straightforward. You're able to just kind of continue to move this down and it would continue to kind of lift up as you're going. Um, one of the downsides with elevators is, you know, they're really, really great at going extremely high up. Uh, with the amount of play and how, how high this is, maybe you don't need to have the, as many stages. Maybe they can be smaller Color. stages, com more compact. Um, some of the advantages here is maybe we can keep that intake on the same plane uh, as yeah. as relative to this. That would definitely help, especially with stuff like the ball. Right, with the ball. And I'll, like just kind of making sure that we're able to keep this balanced. The, the more simplistic route about going around all this, though, is probably doing something kind of similar to what we did um, on our class bot. We just have a single jointed arm that is on this robot. Uh, we're using the extrusion profile and just the holes that are built into our gears to basically be able to hold a piece of extrusion on here. Um, but the nice thing with the class bot is it looks like even from this, it is able to hold all these, uh, like hit all the levels. And we are nowhere near the full size of the sizing cube. So we can probably play with the geometry here a little bit to get a more efficient uh, single jointed arm. Maybe we would want to maybe swap out the extrusion for some channel or something, maybe have something because the mounting surfaces, you don't have yeah. enough, a lot of mounting here. Or maybe we'll want two bars of extrusion. There's some things here we can kind of. Uh, Definitely being able to play with that, iterate a little bit further, knowing what the goal is to get with that. Being able to use it, yeah, you can definitely adapt it. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, take some of the things from the, the random stuff that we had laying around the office um, and see if we're able to actually build a few of these delivery mechanisms that will maybe achieve uh, the goals that we're kind of shooting for. So check back in with us here uh, in a little bit uh, as we kind of continue to work through the weekend.